Hello, welcome to Tales from the Nerd. I am your host, a random nerd slash Kevin, and this is the weekly podcast where I talk about comics and news. Um, reference: I know I didn't upload last week's podcast. I was on vacation, and I said I'll do the podcast over there. I'll do a little vlog. I didn't get to do a vlog. I didn't get to do a podcast because you know what I said. I work eight, an eight-hour shift for five days. And then this is kind of like a mini job already as well, doing this, filming, getting all the pictures, editing. I said to myself, I'll take a week off, and then uh, I'll, I'll come back to it. And this is coming back to it. Now, I'm going to go over the, I'm not going to, re- you know, I'm just going to through the list of the books that came out last week, and I'll tell you which ones are good jumping on points. That's it. And um, basically, that's it. So, Absolute Carnage, oh, well, this, this is all the books that came out August 7th. So, let's go to this. Absolute Carnage. Now, this is a number one. So, it's written by Donnie Cates. Very good writer. And so far, what I heard, it's really good. It's also a $7.99 book. It's a good pickup. So far, everyone says, it is the best Carnage book we ever got. And it's probably the best Venom-related event as well. So, highly recommend. Agents of Atlas, number one as well. Um, It's iffy. It's basically, if you, if we talked about the War of the Realms. They had a new out the agent of atlas and that team is just basically a team of asian heroes it's number one if you really want to know more of uh marvel's asian heroes it's on stores right now so you can still get it we're on to batman number 76 which is part two of the the uh city of bane arc so um haven't read <laughs> city of bane yet so we'll see and then we're on to the batman and teen Mutant ninja Turtles number th- uh number three issue four now, there's two more issues before this ends. I'm not going to jump on point, but so far, I do like what they're doing. Amalgamation time. And then we're on to Champions number eight. Now, this uh, storyline will take with uh, Nova. This, this I think, story will just be mostly Nova. So, that's going to be fun. Now, we're on to Cosmic Ghost Rider no- Destroys Marvel History number six. Now, this is the finale of this book. Uh, so far, it's just Ghost Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider messing around in time. So, that's good. And then we're on to Daredevil number nine. And this is part four of the storyline. So, so far it's good. It's just Daredevil's quit. There is no more Daredevil and people are hunting him down. I highly recommend Daredevil, but now I'm going to jump on up one. Now we're on to DC number four. Now DC number four is just, the DC has been invaded by zombies, but not your typical zombies. Uh, not your jumping on point. It's only six issues, so issue one is still your jumping on point. You can still find those in the comic book store. And now we're on jumping on to Dead Man Logan number ten. Now, not gonna jump on point because Dead Man Logan is a 12, 12 maxi series book. It's not a mini. It's a twelve maxi series, so you kind of have to read issue one to know what's going around. Going around, or you have to read the Old Man Logan series. Uh, not the not the first one. The one that's uh, not the Mark Miller version, the other version of it. Uh, when that's when uh, Marvel rebooted, or not, they don't reboot, but they uh, redesign uh, their logos all the time. But Dead Man Logan is just, Logan goes back to his timeline. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Deathstroke number 46. Now, it's still not going to jump in all of it because we're still dealing with the ramifications of Slade's death. So that's all I got to say for that. Now we're going to move on to Doom Patrol, Weight of the Worlds, number two. I didn't get to talk about number one because how this website says uh, they have different categories for all the books. Literally, DC has like four or five imprints, so I have the imprint now. Uh, but ba- basically, if you love the TV show of Doom Patrol, you're going to love this comic. I heard it's really good, and so far, it gives a good idea what the Doom Patrol is in the comics. If you watch the TV show, it's basically what you get on the, on the comic. Uh, also, it's a good jumping out point because you still get issue one. Now we're going to move on to the Green Lantern number 10. Now, Green Lantern number 10 is just, um, it's Wacky Space Adventure by Grant Morrison. Not going to jump out point. You have to pick up issue one because trust me, if you jump on a Grant Morrison book in the middle of a storyline, you're going to get lost. Now, now we're up to House of X number two. House of X is basically a, not a reboot, but it's just clean up the waters of X-Men. And so far, from what I hear, it's epic, and John the, John the Hickman gives you explanations. Explanation galore, and it's wonderful. Now we're going to move on to Mortal Hulk number 22, 
and oh my god it's picking up a new storyline it, it look the cover looks cool i can't i can't pull up the picture of the cover unfortunately but immortal hulk is always a top pick in my opinion and also most like no no they still sell immortal hulk number 22 so if you still want to read hulk go to the comic book shop get immortal hulk number 22 before they sell out now we're going to move on to Justice League number 29. Now this is a prelude to a Justice slash Doom War prelude. And you know what? Justice League has been pretty good. So I highly recommend it if your jumping on point is like, I want to read Justice League. This is your jumping on point. And then, well, I give you a rough estimate of a jumping on point. Not a good estimate. It's, it's just like if you, you jump in here, if you like it, you can pick up the other books. Okay. Whew. Speaking a lot, I miss it. Uh, we're going to move on to Old Man Quill number 8. Now, this is basically set in the Old Man universe, like Old Man Hawkeye, Old, Old Man Logan. This is the third Old Man series. And you know what? It's good. It's good. It's always been good. Uh, not going to jump on that point, unfortunately. But when it's over, pick up the trade because the trade will be epic. Now, we're going to move on to Punisher number 14. Now, War in the Streets. Now, Punisher escaped war from Zemo, and he's back in New York, and he's, you know, going to fight Zemo in his turf. So, I'm excited for that. And it's also a new storyline, so it is a good jumping on point. Now, we're going to move on to Savage Avengers number four. It's chapter four. It, the Savage Avengers is basically like their magic side of, of the Marvel side of the universe, um, that's how I see it, because you got you got Venom, you got Brother Voodoo, you got Wolverine, you got Conan the Bar, uh, Conan the Barbarian, no, Conan, yeah, you got Conan, uh, Elektra, and Punisher. Now, most of these characters are related to magic. Even Wolverine has had his uh, hand in magic before, so I'm, I really like Savage Avengers, and it's probably one of the top tier books. In, oh, in my opinion, it's one of the best books from Marvel at the moment as well. And the last book that came out last week in August 7th is Sinestro Year One, Year of the Villain number one. Now, it is a, a one-shot. So, a one-shot basically is it's just a one and one story. And it's just going to give up background to the Year of the Villain. That It's going to be a year-long story that they're going to do. And I don't know what to expect. Because DC's doing it. And then Marvel's doing it as well. So, everyone says... Let's do villain. Well, one is, you know, it's going to take its time. The other one is just no, a year-long plan of villains. But, yeah, that's all the books that came out last week. Please let me know which books you would have picked up last week. Now we're going to move on to the books that are coming out this week. And and there's a lot because we're dealing with, with absolute carnage tie-ins. Now, when Marvel has an event, they always have tie-ins. That's how they work. I if you ask me why why have why have times when you can just have a whole story i don't know i don't know but we're gonna move on to this is, uh how i do this is i give you the book name who writes it how much it is and then description absolute carnage scream number one written by colin bunn and art by gerard gerardo sandoval and the price point is 3.99 this is a description. The return of a classic symbiote, and it'll be a scream. Years ago, Patricia Robertson was unwillingly bonded to the clone of Venom that eventually became Ma Mania, and she's been living in fear of symbiotes ever since. But she's also been living with, with a secret, and with the coming of Carnage, Patricia must take a stand and will have no choice but to confront her demons head on. Now, not a good jumping on point because one you're doing this is gonna be like a three issue mini if i remember the problem with this is you have to read absolute carnage and then you have to read this now tines aren't always they're just like little off stories that will connect future on to the event um i'm picking it up because i, I really i'm I'm, real, I'm i'm a real sucker for tines okay i read war of the realms god damn it except like if a uh, book had like like, Squirrel Girl, she had a time to War of the Realms. I didn't read that because, one, I don't read Squirrel Girl. <laughs> I already have a, a lot of books as it is. But is this a good pickup? Yes, if 
if you want to read this and like, okay, I like Absolute Carnage, which you can still get Absolute Carnage right now at the comic store. But that's it. Next book, Absolute Carnage Separation Anxiety Number One, written by Clay McLeod Chapman and art by Brian Level. Oh, that's pretty easy. Brian Level, pretty easy name. The price point is four ninety nine. How much was the other one? Huh? Why is this one so so much more? Okay. Description. Since the conclusion of Deadpool vs. Carnage, four of the five living Foundation symbiote, Riot, Phage, Agony, Lasher, have been bonded to, to a stray dog wandering the mist, Midwest. But as Carnage descends on New York, its siblings will find it, it impossible to resist the siren song of Null. Now, if you, if you read Venom, Null is the king of symbiote, symbiotes, and you know what? He's awesome. He is awesome. Read Donny Cates' Venom. It's fantastic. Uh, really recommend it. Trust me. It re redefines Venom as it is. But it uh, is a good jumping on point. Yes, if you want to read, read a number one, but it's also a mini, so I wouldn't recommend it. And don't waste your money on minis. I can do it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> But we're going to move on to the next book, which is The Amazing Spider-Man number 27, written by the great Nick Spencer and art by Kev Walker. And the price point is $3.99, and this is the description. There is a new Sinister, sinister Syndicate. Beetle, Electro, Lady Octopus, Scorpia, and White Rabbit have come together for one reason, to hunt Boomerang. Spider knew having Boomerang as a roommate will come back to bite him, but not like this. Now... This is a second part of a storyline, so I do recommend picking up uh, Amazing Spider-Man. It's always a fun read because Nick Spencer knows how to write Spider-Man. He is... It's Peter Parker, Donald's luck, but Spider-Man, he's always helping people. And he's becoming Spider-Man again because how Dan Slott wrote him. He kind of wrote him like a dick. But I did like Dan Slott's writing. But I, I do like what Nick Spencer has done with Spider-Man. Spider-Man, always a good pickup. We're gonna move on to the next book. Batman and the Outsiders, number four, written by Brian Hill and art by Dexter Soy and Veronica Gandhi. The price is $3.99. At last, no, the description is at last, the Outsiders take off on their mission to rescue Sophia from none other than Rachel Ghoul. But Roz, is, Roz has other ideas for the quartet and with the aid of Lex Luthor's mysterious gift they are planning right into his hand now pl oh playing in right into his hand my bad um the funny thing about Batman and the Outsiders originally it was pitched as a mini and then stuff was happening in the background of the comics and it was supposed to come out December the book was supposed to come out December slash January but it got delayed until like what was like April yeah, it got delayed till April or May. And so far, um, it's okay. I The way the first issue went, it's like, okay, it has a good premise. There's a little iffy thing about... Uh, but it's, it's pretty good. Then issue two and three came out. I was like, huh. They're stretching the story out a lot. <laughs> but um, do I recommend it? No, unfortunately. It is a, it, it is a bad title, but... You really don't need to read it, unfortunately. But Brian Hill is a pretty good writer, so unfortunately, I'm not going to jump it on point. We're going to move on to the next book, which is Captain Marvel number 9, written by Kelly Thompson and art by Carmen Carnero. The, uh, the price point is $3.99. This is the description. A star rises, another falls. Being Captain Marvel has been the greatest joy of Carol Danvers' life, but a new hero is rising to the limelight, just as Carol's own powers begin to fail her. With everyone now believing she's a Kree traitor, Carol can't help but wonder, does the world even need Captain Marvel? The Okay, it's part two of a storyline. Uh, you can still get part, uh, part one. See, the thing about Captain Marvel is, it's an okay book, um, it gets a lot of, it gets a lot of flack, because it's Captain Wrong, because the movie was, I don't want to talk more about the movie, but the movie was okay in my opinion, people were saying it's the greatest origin film, to me, it was okay, it felt very early on Marvel, but 
the book is okay. The book is okay. Um, it had like a cool, it had somewhat of a cool premise, a cool idea, but it's okay. Now, Captain Marvel got like, has been, re well not retold, but has been read by different people many, many times. I think this is like her fifth book. Because the other ones were cancelled. Well, not cancelled. They were like, it ended, but she's coming back. But, um, is it going to jump on point? Yes, uh, but I do, uh, I do warn you just get up issue 8 and then, you know, you really don't need to read the other ones. You just need to read issue 8. Uh, we're going to move on to the next book, which is Catwoman number 14, written by Ram V. Oh! Wait, What? What? Ram V. All oh, Jolene Jones is not writing the book anymore? What? Or is she taking a break? That's odd. Okay. Sorry. Ram V and art by Mir Mirka and Andolfo and Arif Prianto. Arif Prianto. The price point is $3.99 and this is the description. A secret file outlining the ins and outs of the criminal underworld of Villa Hermosa is on the streets, and every cook is, af is after it. Whoever possesses this info can control everything, and some of the town's hoods are even bringing in outside agents like Lockup and Gentleman Ghost to act as their champions, which, let's face it, you're going to need it if you're going to try to outsmart outsmart Catwoman, making things even more dangerous for Selena Kyle. There's also a price on her head. If you are if you can capture the database and kill Catwoman, the payoff is double. Now, I think this is a new storyline because... Let me go check. This has to be a new storyline because Jolie Jones is not writing the book at the moment. That's odd. I didn't read... Apparently... Yeah, Jolie Jones is writing the book for the last 14 issues. I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing this is Blood Thinnings. I'm guessing this is a new storyline. I don't know. I'm kind of out of my comics still. So, um, Catwoman, I think, between Captain Marvel and Catwoman, Catwoman is a better read, in my opinion. It's a little bit better read. But that's it. We're going to move on to the next book, which is Detective Comics 1009, written by Peter J. Tomasi. And art by Christian Deuce, Luis Guerrero, and the price point is $3.99. This is the description. Take your shot begins. Deadshot has returned to Gotham City following a long stint with the Suicide Squad. And Batman fears that without the oversight of Amanda Waller, Floyd Lawton will go back to his old ways. Meanwhile, after taking Lex Luthor's offer, Mr. Freeze begins. Begins taking action to get exactly what he wants and killing anyone who stands stands in his way. Now, Detective Comics is really good. Peter J. Tomasi is really good. Now, 1008 is your jump down point. 1009 is the second part of the story. I don't know how long the storyline is going to last. I think it's another issue or, or two or if not four more. But so far, Peter J. Tomasi is awesome. He wrote a good... He's been writing about Detective really good. I do miss the other writer, which I forget. James Hyde in the fourth. I do miss his writing, but Peter J. Tomasi is really good. But we're going to move on to the next book. It's good jumping on point, by the way. Next book is Doctor Strange number 17, written by Mark Wade, art by Barry Kitson and Scott Coblish. The price point is $3.99. This is the description of the book. The stakes have never been higher for Stephen Strange as Herald Supreme reaches its climax. Not only is the multiverse in jeopardy, but is the love of Stephen's life. Can Strange save both existence and Clea? Um, this is not going to jump in on point, unfortunately. Because it's in the middle of a storyline and also... also also, we we learned that issue 20 is the last issue for Doctor Strange. Now, the book was canceled. Oh, I think it was announced it was canceled while I was on vacation. Um, kind of understandable because... Um, um, yeah, it's kind of understandable. I mean, the book's okay. 
A lot of Doctor Strange fans don't like it. Um, I jumped on the Donny Cates one when he was writing. That was really cool. And then when Mark Way brought it, I was like, okay, it's pretty interesting. I, I like the space part, but the magic part doesn't make sense. And then he introduced another guy who took away his magic. And then it's like, oh, I'm going to come back. But now the book is canceled. So uh, not going to jump down point at all. So we're going to move on to the next book. Actually, let me go get the other books ready while that... Uh, how's everyone on? I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, I was on vacation and I'm happy I'm back. But my god, I am tired. Also, look at my Instagram. By the way, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I posted a couple pics of. Uh, I, put, I did post on like two or three pics. But I did buy something interesting and go to my um, Instagram and also Twitter. Let me Let me know how cool that is. I'm not gonna say what I what I bought, but yeah, uh, just just let so you know. It, I I think it's cool. But yeah, Event. We're gonna move on to the next book, which is Event Leviathan number three, written by Brian Michael Bendis and art by Alex Maliev. The price point is three ninety nine. Also, it's a heavy book. It's a heavy. It's a heavy week as well. From, okay, this is the description of the book. From the award-winning team of, of writer Brian Michael Bendis art and artist Alex Maleev, it's DC's biggest whodunit in years. The world's greatest detectives, Batman, Green Arrow, Lois Lane, Plastic Man, and The Question and Martian Manhunter have gathered to solve the mystery behind the true identity of Leviathan's leaders and the destruction, destruction of the world's top intelligence agencies. Red Hood is either... Either is their leading suspect, and he is on the loose. Plus, the silencer takes a shot. This mystery will unleash a new evil on the DC universe. Um, if if you want to know what Leviathan is, if you're reading Superman, you've you've read Superman, and you're reading Event Lab, um, this is basically explaining what Event Leviathan was. Leviathan is a group, a terror. Well, not it's an eco group. That does evil stuff. Now Talia Al Ghul was the leader of it from last time I read, and I don't know who's taking over, but it's it's in the middle. So after this issue, if you're not picking up the book, next issue you're not gonna read it, or you could pick up the trade. It's only like a six issue mini. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna move on to the next book, which is Fantastic Four number thirteen, written by Dan Slott and art by Sean Izaske. Izak say i don't know the price point is three nine nine and this is a description the clock is ticking down the moment is almost at hand that to wait that do or die instant where ben Grimm will either find out find the will to win or be annihilated by fighting the mad immortal hulk now immortal hulk is really good he's this is his third appearance in the fantastic four book um, it's a good jumping on board because issue 14, issue 12 is where the story picks up. Uh, basically Ben Grimm is on vacation and the Hulk pops up. That's really the description of the book. Um, and I think it's only like a two part, I think it's a two part story. Uh, yeah, it's a two part story. So if you don't want to pick this one up, this is like the, the only two story arc and then we're getting New York in issue 14, but that's it. It's a good pickup. Get it, get it while it's there get it while it's there okay next book the flash number 76 written by joshua williamson and art by Ra rafa sandoval and the price point is 3.99 death of the speed force begins with renewed resolve following the events of flash year one the flash is back with a new mission a new outlook and a brand new speedster hq but the fastest man alive is slowing down there's only one explanation the speed force is dying. Plus, the year of the villain he oh, heats up as Captain Cold uses Lex Luthor's offer to boost Heat Wave to the next level. I'm really excited because uh, after issue 75, uh, which I haven't read yet, I have to read it. But basically, this is your jumping on point. You only have to read issue 75, which is like a milestone issue. Um, to kind of understand what uh, what Captain Cold got. But Captain Cold is back. I'm excited. He's not with the Suicide Squad anymore. 
let's get it going with more Flash. Also, because the TV show Flash is coming back in like two months, so I'm really excited. Plus, Joshua Williamson is awesome writing Flash. But yeah, it's a good pickup, in my opinion. Now, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number 10, written by Tom Taylor and Art... Oh, no, Tom Taylor... Well, actually, this is missing, like, a lot of information about who's writing this. I mean, who's drawing this. Uh, apparently, he's not even telling me who's right, who's um, drawing this. Um, the cover is done by Andrew Robinson. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me much more. But the price point is $3.99. The climactic end of Arc 2 puts Spider-Man face-to-face -face with a villain who's been secretly plaguing the Marvel Universe since World War II. The villain weaponizes pain and uses Spider-Man's painful history to threaten the web slinger like never before. I'm um, not going to jump on all point because this is ending a storyline, apparently? No? Yes? I'm guessing... Yeah. I'm guessing this is... I'm guessing this is it, apparently, but, um, Spider-Man, um, you really don't need to pick a friendly neighborhood. You only really need amazing. I feel like how the direction of friendly neighborhood is going, I think it's ending, uh, anytime soon. Sorry, I mean, Tom Taylor's a really good writer, but that book is, out of all the Spider-Man titles, it's probably one of the weakest ones, unfortunately. Um... But yeah, um, I'm 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 I, I'm just picking up to just read it uh, at the moment, and yeah, I'm re uh, as I'm talking right now. I'm just picking up the books. Uh, okay, this is it. I only got a few more books to talk about, and then I'm done. And then I'm done. Uh, this is this will be a short podcast. Uh, this is episode 17, so I will this week. I'll you'll get two uploads. And then next week should be the regular scheduled podcast. Uh, this week I'm just talking about the comics. And this podcast will just be the comics. The other one will be the news. And the following one will be the same format as always. But to the next book. Hawkman number 15. Written by Robert Vendetti. And art by Tom Palmer. Now. The price point is $3.99. And this is the description. Following Lex Luthor's gift. The new and improved Shadow Thief toys with the wounded wounded Hawkman. Carl Hall desperately seeks help from the only other Shadow Mystic more powerful than Shadow Thief, the Shade. Oh, the Shade is like an old Hawkman villain, too. I think that's his only villain. Um, this is part two of a storyline. So if you want to read it, you get issue 14 and issue 15, which you can do it this Wednesday because Wednesday's always comic book day. Uh, you should know that by now. This is, ish, this is episode seventeen of of this podcast. But yeah, um, I like I like Robert Vendetti's writing, so it's always a good pickup in my opinion. Now, The Immortal Hulk Director's Cut Number One, written by Al Ewing and artist by Joe Bennett. Now, I've never gotten a director's cut of a book before. I'm excited for this because it's Mortal Hulk. It's really good, and you're going to get inside of the pencils and everything. So you're going to get extra bit information about the Mortal Hulk. I'm getting this because I like it. And you know what I said? Screw it. I'm getting more Mortal Hulk. Also, I can't get more. Who doesn't want more Mortal Hulk? This is a description. The, ho the ho horror has a name. Uh, the horror has a name. And now it's unleashed in a in full graphic detail. You never notice the man. He doesn't make he doesn't like to be noticed. He's quiet, calm, never complains. If someone were to walk up to walk up and shoot him in the head, all he'd do is die. Until night falls. And someone else gets up. The man's name is Banner. The horror is the immortal Hulk. And trouble has a way of finding them both. As reporter Jackie McGee tries to pull together the pieces Banner threads a lonely path from town to town, unearthing murder, mystery, and a tra and tragedy as he goes. And Banner discovers the Hulk smashes. The critic, uh, the critically acclaimed reinvention of one of the Marvel's biggest icons is represented in a director's cut form with Joe Bennett savage, Joe Bennett's savage pencils and more incredible bonus features. Now, Immortal Hulk. Director's Cut, I'm getting it, I recommend it, because anything Al Ewing does, 
It's freaking awesome. I love this version of Hulk. This this Hulk is stronger than World Breaker Hulk. I had a discussion with my friend. He says, yeah, this Hulk is scary. And he is probably stronger than, than that. Because this Hulk dies and he just comes back. He's like, I can't be, I can't be defeated. Tony Stark threw a nuke at him. He still came back. So, oh, more Immortal Hulk. Can't get enough of it. Now we're going to move on to Just League Odyssey number 12, written by Dan Abnett and art by Will Conrad. Now, the, the price point is $3.99, and this is the description of the book. The new reign of Darkseid begins in, ghost, in the Ghost Sector. With the death of the new gods, he plans to use the Sepulchor to rebuild a new army. But even the great Darkseid couldn't enslave and control the Ghost Sector alone. He'll require the help of the new gods. Newest Heralds, Cyborg, Starfly, and Azrael. Oh. oh, okay, Jessica Cruz is in the cover. Um, not going to jump it on, because I th think it's in the middle of the storyline. Yeah, it's in the middle of the storyline at the moment, so. Yeah, um, I don't recommend it. It's, ins I mean, I just the Odyssey is interesting, but kind of went nowhere, like, around... Because Joshua Williamson was writing the book and then he had to leave the book. And uh, it's hard. I mean, Dan Abnett, it's good, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with DC's editorial at the moment. What's weird, okay, little tangent. What's weird is a couple, like, a couple years ago, Marvel's books were crap. Or they were not that good. DC's books were, were like critically acclaimed. They were like the best of the best at the time. Move over a couple years to now, DC books are okay. Marvel books are, are like great. What happened? Why is there always a dyna dynamic shift between these two these two companies? They're the top two. I don't know what's going on, but yeah. We're gonna move on to Loki number two, written by Daniel Kibblesmith, art by Oscar Bazaldua. And the price point is $3.99. And this is the description of the book. Escape from Stark Unlimited. Restless with, with his new duties after War of the Realms, Loki seeks out the advice of, close, of the closest thing uh, Earth has to a king. Tony Stark, the invincible Iron Man. Close enough, right? But it turns out Old Shellhead isn't happy to see Loki on account uh, of all the stuff he did. Now, the new... the yeah, now the god of mischief, stories, slash evil, slash chaos, has to outsmart the cleverest man in Midgar or die again, trying. Meanwhile, could Thor be hatching a mischievous plot of his own? Uh, Loki's a new book, so issue one, you can still pick it up. Issue two is, uh, is out. Um, I don't know if this is, if you, if you love Loki, this is your, this is your jam. This is going to be your, your stuff. Um, in my opinion, I haven't read Loki number one, so I cannot tell you if it's a good pickup book at the moment. Because I I don't think I've read anything about Daniel Kibblesmith, so I can't really tell about that. But if you do want to read Loki, pick up if you want, and then you decide from there on. And right now, we're going to move on to the next book, which is Miles Morales' Spider-Man number nine, written by Sal Salina Ahmed and art by Javier Garon. The price point is $3.99. This is a description. If Miles is going to escape New York with, uh, escape this new villain, the shadowy masters and diabolical test, he'll need help. Good thing his dad, former she agent, sh his dad's a former agent of Shield, and there's no price Jeff wouldn't pay to get his son back. But trade the trade may come back to haunt him, haunt them, as one of the most formidable foes, Miles' face returns. Featuring the last of a series cover, okay. Featuring the last of a series of covers by Into the Spider Verse art director Patrick O'Keefe. Yeah, the covers are amazing, by the way. If I'll, I'll put up, of course, I'll put up an image. Um, yeah, the covers are amazing in, in Miles Morales. They're top tier. We're gonna move on to the next book. After this is only no, uh, this and the other three. There's just one books I can talk about, and then I'm done for the week. And then f either Friday or Sunday, you're going to get an upload. I haven't decided when I'm going to upload the other part of the news. I don't know when I'm going to upload the part of the news. I'll film um, probably Thursday. But my work schedule is all weird this week. So we'll see. We'll see. But 
Powers of X number two, written by Jonathan Hickman, art by R.B. Silva. The price is $4.99, and this is the description of the book. As Xavier Va- Sa- sows the seed of the past, the X-Men's future blossoms into a trouble into trouble for all mutant dom. Superstar writer John the Hickman, he's written New Avengers, Infinity, Fantastic Four, continues reshaping the X-Men's past, present, and future with breakout star R.B. Silva. He's drawn Uncanny X-Men. Now, Powers of X, so far from what I've heard, it is epic. John the Hickman, you're amazing. It's a good pickup. Get it, because Powers of X, House of X, are selling out. <laughs> They're selling out. So go go get those books right now and get the reprints as well. If you don't, if you can't get the original copies, get a reprint. So good thing. Um, yeah. So we're gonna move on to the next book, which is Silver Surfer Black Number Three, written by Donny Cates and art by Trad Moore. The price is three ninety nine. This is the description of the book. The surfer's powers is fading. Is this the end for Noron Rad? As the all-consuming darkness descends upon him, or will he, be, or will he help, or will help come into the form of an unexpected ally? Now, I think this is giving the origin of how he turned into the Serval Surfer Black from Donny Cates's Thanos run, where Thanos wins. That's what it's called, Thanos wins that story arc. Um, so far, it's interesting. It's weird. It's a little bit lower, unfortunately. It's not as good as Venom, but it's not bad. It's as, in my opinion, uh, it's a little weird. I'll give it that, but it's it's an okay read. If you were like, I want to read Tiller Surfer, um, this is your pickup book. Now, we're going to go to the controversial book um, for the wrong reason. I'll give you a description, and then I'll talk, I'll talk about the book, why it's controversial. Superman number 14, written by Brian Michael Bendis, art by Ivan Rees, and the price is $3.99. Lex Luthor is back in Metropolis, and he's ready to wreak havoc. First stop, the most dangerous woman in the DC Universe, Lois Lane. Alone, her family a galaxy away. Will Lois be tempted by Apex Lex, Lex's offer? What does Lex have that this reporter can't turn away f- from? Don't miss this shocking new twist and the... Oh my bad! In the, oh god, my bad! In the Superman mythos, now it's controversial because it has two different covers. Quite literally, it will have two different covers. Now, usually they'll have variant covers. No, this book has two different covers for a reason. DC said, "Oh, the book doesn't the the cover doesn't reflect the story," so we're. Uh, all comic shops uh, rip up the, the covers and we'll send you new ones. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Unfortunately, well, they said they will do it for free, but see, here's the thing there's a market for books. This cover is gonna be rare. People are gonna sell the cover. Now, I'll put up a picture of the normal cover and the different cover, which is weird because uh, one has Rogel Zal. No, no, one is Lois Lane and and Apex Lex and Superman. And then the other one, that that's the new one, is uh, just Rogel's all in chains with Superman, Zod, uh, John, Crypto, if I believe. Yeah, Crypto and Kara. I don't know why. It also doesn't have the Year of the Villain stamp thing, which I think is so stupid. I don't like it has the Year of the Villain stamp. Um, in my opinion, I just, I just don't like the Year of the Villain stamp. I'm like, you can have it, but like, don't, you're announcing it too much. Um, but yeah. Now we're on to the final book, which is Wonder Woman number 76. Written by G. Willow Wilson. Art by Lee Garbett. The price is $3.99. And this is the description of the book. Cheetah returns to the pages of, with Vid, uh, Cheetah returns to the pages with vengeance. Lex Luthor has given his fellow Legionnaire of Doom everything she needs to, to slake her thirst with Diana's blood once and for all. Um, I'm really behind on Wonder Woman as well. Look at this only once a month. I think I'm only I'm only one issue behind, but um 
Wonder Woman's okay. Her book's okay. It's just weird because her her book has been written by like three to four different people. You could read issue 75 or you could read issue 76. That's I really can't tell you where to jump on from there because it's weird because how they're introducing this um, gift that Lex Apex Lex is giving. Um, but yeah, I'll give you that. And that's all for this week. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, and you will hopefully see another upload by me later this week, if not uh, early next week. But yeah, it's just a lot of stuff has been happening. I was on vacation. I, I, I did a lot during vacation. I, I was in Los Angeles. I was doing stuff with family. So uh, it, I, over there, I really didn't sit down much. I only had like probably like, I think a day. I sat down most of the day, but I was doing other stuff with family. But hope you enjoy. And please let me know what book you're excited for uh, that I told you that's coming out for this week. Or what book you were excited for that came out last week. Uh, let me know in the description. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Peace.